Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another exciting Channel 22 sports presentation. We are delighted tonight to bring you the 2003 CIF Southern Section Boys Semifinals, 1AA, as the Losinger Olympians have made the 90-mile trip out west, heading toward Vegas, 4,000 feet above sea level, as we are at Serrano High School, which is the choice school. We are playing Silverado, as you see. We're playing the Silverado Hawks in the semifinals. The winner tonight goes on to play for the 1AA championship. I'm Rufus Washington, joined as always by my partner, Dave Marks. Dave, this is playoff atmosphere. We got a packed house tonight. Yes, we certainly do, Rufus Washington, here at, uh, as you noted, at Serrano High School, just a, about 15 minutes out of Victorville, where the school Silverado is from. And it's going to be interesting to see how losing or coming way, making the 90-mile, almost two-hour trip out here, how they're going to react to a hostile crowd that's going to be three-fourths against them. There are some Losinger fans here that made the trip, but not many. They're going to be shouted down, and they're going to have to keep their composure. And the first five minutes of the game are going to be the key. It gives us an opportunity to also let you know we've got a third partner on the broadcast crew tonight, and that is Scott Goodman. Scott's down sideline. We're going to try to get Scott in for his pregame thoughts as well. Scott Goodman, are you there? path here has been an impressive one as they have defeated three straight league winners and it's not going to get any easier tonight as losing has taken on a Silverado team that is coming in with a 25-1 oh, okay. record overall has won the Desert Sky League for the second year in a row and has not lost since December 28th so they haven't lost since 2002 uh, losing are coming in as being led by of course their Ocean League player of the year Darrell Wright who's averaging well over a double-double throughout the duration of the playoffs thus far. And talking with Coach Morris before the game, he stated that the losing year Olympians are going to stick to their game plan that they've had throughout the playoffs and throughout the year. And it, based on that, you can't go wrong with that game plan. Silverado defensively look for them to play a full court press throughout the game. Back to you, Rufus and Dave. Thank you very much, Scott, for those thoughts, Scott. Gutman as always right on target. The losing Olympians. We now are having the introduction. Actually, fans, we're going to have the national anthem, so we will pause in silence as we pay tribute to our flag. Right, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. One of the local favorites 
a student I'm going to gather from Silverado, entertaining the crowd with a very stirring rendition of our national anthem. That gave the crowd a nice rise. Now we prepare to have the starting lineups. And as the lineups are introduced, Dave, let's go back. You, you got started with it, and now um, follow up on your comments. We had a chance, fans, to join the Olympians in the locker room um, before they came out for the warm-ups. And it was a very spirited uh, presentation by head coach Reggie Morris, Jr. In terms of having his guys appreciate this moment and making the most out of it. As you noted earlier, he said the first three to five minutes are what's key, look in their eyes. But what I like, Dave, is that he told them to have fun and to be focused. Well, that's what they've got to do. There's no other choice because it's either, it's either win or go home. If uh, they don't get it done tonight, the, the season virtually over for them in all, all respects. Uh, they have to play loose. As you did mention, he wants them to look into the eyes of the other team, especially on a team that's going to want to try to press them just to see what they've got, to see if they're serious. Now, Losinger has a decided height advantage over Silverado. As you take a look at both rosters, you would take a look and you'd say, well, you know, Silverado, much smaller team, the tallest player being uh, Ash Dabas at six foot five. But as uh, Losinger head coach Redmond Morris Jr. will say, don't let that fool you because a team like Silverado didn't go 28 and one for nothing. 28 and one, although they are out in the Desert Sky League, a little different from playing in the grimier inner city or the South Bay, so to speak. Uh, with my apologies to the South Bay in the LA City area. Their conference probably not as battle tested, but they do play some big teams. They uh, only loss has been to Fontana, which is a ranked team. And some of the competition out here in the high desert can get tough. So we will see how it rolls out in the first five minutes. There you see head coach Re Reggie Morris, a very relaxed head coach, and, and I took a lot out of it. First of all, you see coming out, number one, Demetrius Doby. You, got, you don't actually see him, but he's introduced first. Well, now you'll get a look. That's uh, Next is Sheldon Wilson. Number three, Darrell Wright. For all you Olympian fans, all familiar faces here. Two minor things to share with you. Daryl Street uh, did not make the trip. We understand that Daryl is injured. We certainly wish him a speedy recovery and hope that uh, he's ready for future contests. The other new wrinkle in tonight's contest, Dave, and that's that we have three officials working tonight's game. And I'm told that from here on out in playoff action, there will be three officials in each game. Wonder what a difference that will make in the way the game is played for both teams because now you've got an extra pair of eyes. And if we get a camera shot of those officials, we'll, t we'll introduce them to you. We can give you their names. That's Rich Porter, Scott, Pl Scott Plutko. When we get them there, you see the losing Olympians getting pumped. You got the cheer squad in there. You got the players in there. And of course, you got to give a lot of credit. And there you see on your left, that's Byron Ferguson. In the middle is Rich Porter. He's the head official tonight. And on the right is Scott Plutko. So that's the officiating crew. It is a three-man crew, and that is a bit of a wrinkle. And of course, with the games being as important as they are, you need as many eyes as possible on the court. Well, the Silverado Hawks being introduced right now to the crowd. Of course, they were 8-0 in the Desert Sky League out here in the high desert. Their only loss at 28 and one overall to Fontana in the San Bernardino tournament. They're gonna start basically a three guard offense. Their leading scorer, Dominic Priestley, is a five foot nine senior guard. Actually, he's not their leading scorer, averages nine a ball game, but not too shabby. Their leading scorer is actually Vince Alvarado, the other guard, he's a six foot senior. He averages 13.5 a ball game. The third guard, Jamie Lester, he averages 12 and a half a ball game. He stands at 6 or 2, he's a junior. And on the front line is Ash Dabas. He averages 10 and a half points a game. He's 6 foot 5, their tallest player. And Brandon Price is a senior forward, averaging 10 points a game to 6 foot 4. And it's going to be interesting because this is a team, basically, defensively, their coach, Kurt Herbst, says they are going to basically play a man to man. They'll play a little zone. Defensively, they're going to try to press all over the court. They make no secret about that. 
but uh, you would wonder what they would want to try to do to try to match up against Dorrell Wright. You figure they would have to be concerned about a player of his caliber coming in. Now in the man-to-man -man situation, that leads it up to probably Ash Dabas to try to contain him. Ash Dabas with his right hand taped up a little bit, of, a little bit of problem with that hand. So that should be an interesting matchup, and it's going to be a chess match tonight, Rufus, between Reggie Morris Jr. and Kurt Herps. And One of these teams is 8, 16, 24, 32 minutes away from a date in Disney World at the Arrowhead Pond, and uh, we shall see. Will it be the losing Olympians of Lawndale or the Silverado Hawks of Victorville, California? And here to call the play for you as we start this ball game, Rufus. Thank you, Dave, and we are preparing for the opening jump. To toss the ball will be Scott Plutko stepping in, Dorel Wright and Aish Dabas, and we got a violation. Let's see. We're gonna, we're gonna toss it again. The head official, Rich Porter, indicating to Dabas to retoss it. So, clock's at 7.59. I think they want to reset. Okay, we're getting the players set, and the question now is do we reset the clock to eight minutes? That one second could be valuable. My opinion, we should, but it doesn't look like we're going to. So we're going to go with the start with a 7.59 start. It's up. Dorel Wright controlled the tip, but Silverado, the Hawks, come away with it. Myron Terrell, number 10, out top on Vince Alvarado. That shot from outside doesn't go. Dorrell pulls it down, gives it off to Terrell. He gets it up to Demetrius Doby. Nearly a turnover, but they control. There's Dorrell, shot from three-point range, draws a lot of iron, doesn't drop for him, but it looked good. And we'll see which team can battle the what has to be, understandably, early nerves, realizing what's at stake here tonight. Hawks now with the ball out top. That's Alvarado. He apparently runs point for them. As Dave said, working with him, Dominique Priestley. That shot put up from distance doesn't go. Dorrell Wright, second rebound. Gets the outlet pass. It should be a deuce, and it is. Scored a basket for Sheldon Wilson. And losing her now showing similages of a full court press. First pass there. Seem to break it with no pressure. Let's see what the call is going to be. It's going to be a block against the Olympians. And, of course, that's Kelsey Bars, number 12, who's out on the floor for the Olympians also. So we've got Wilson, Terrell, Dorrell Wright, Demetrius Doby, and Kelsey Bars out there. Well, as Dominic Priestley hits the free throw, there we see Silverado able to break the press and get numbers up court. And they're a team that does run. They, of course, being a small team, you want to run. You want to be quick. And you see evidence of it, of it there, able to get to the free throw line. The Both the free score. throws good by Priestley. Now, Silverado shows a full court press of their own. This has caused losing her some problems in the past. This time they break it with no problem. Wilson's shot knocked away. That's Ash Dabas, the big man, six foot five. As we've noted, losing her does have a height advantage on this team right now. Tricks to play good defense, that's short. Comes off, taken by the Olympians. They're running the floor. Bars gets the pass. Bars shot goes up, it doesn't drop. Losing the fighting for the rebound, it comes off. However, Silverado has it. They push it up, get it back to the middle now. They look inside. They're shot blocked by Dorrell Wright. He blocked Abbas's shot, I believe Abbas's 20, Dabas rather. That's so we got a block a piece, Dave. And that's going to make Davis think a little bit. That shot from three-point range is good by Vince Alvarado. And that gives the lead over to Silverado at 5-2. We're still in first quarter action, fans. Pass attempted inside to Demetrius Doby, stolen by Davis. Priestley now bring it, Priestley spins in the lane, kicks it back outside. Alvarado with it being guarded by Wilson. They get a guy loose underneath, and right now they're getting inside on the Olympians. 
Olympians finally get it in bounds. No one coming back to the ball. Again, you got to anticipate the press. Losing a look at long throws it away. Right now, with five minutes left in the first, they trail by a margin of 72. Shot goes up and in. And we're going to get a foul call against. This one's going to go against Dorrell Wright. And it's going to send Davis to the line for a three point play. Well, it's not rocket science at this point with 4.58 to go in the first quarter. It's just simply smart play and aggressive defense and capitalizing on some turnovers on the part of Losinger. And they are out to a quick 9-2 lead pending the three-point play, which will send the Losinger Olympians to the bench to talk it over. 30-second timeout being taken. There you, you get a, a view of Coach Morris talking to his squad. An early foul, and that's what's key, that foul on Dorrell Wright. And of course, uh, Coach Reggie Morris Jr. mentioning before the game how the first five minutes were going to be crucial. Well, we are just about at the, about a minute away from the five minute mark. And so far, it is the Silverado Hawks who have been very smooth, just uh, making the basic plays, getting the pump fakes, playing the defense. And of course, uh, the hot three point shot by Vince Alvarado, who leads them in scoring with 13 and a half a ball game. So, right here on what is Technically a neutral court, but of course, in, in all for all intents and purposes, a home game for the Silverado Hawks. Losing our Olympians must get themselves composed. This is a position that they have not been in in the first three games of the playoffs this year. Right now to score 9-2 with Davis at the line looking to convert the three-point play. And he does. Makes it a 10-2 game. Here's that vaunted full court press that uh, came as advertised. Losing it gets it down. We have a sub that's come on the floor. Donnell right now on the floor. Dorrell shot put up, doesn't drop for him. Comes off. They're running. Stop, pop. Rebound taken down by them. They go up. Let's see who they call the foul on. They call this one on Kelsey Bars, looks like. Oh, there's bars out there. I see the one indicated, so it must have been Demetrius Doby, I'm going to guess. And Brandon Price going to the free throw line. So far, he uh, at six foot four appears to be the designated rebounder for the Silverado Hawks, who've done a fine job off the boards in this first quarter. Losing it with three team fouls already here with 432 left in the first. They trail by nine at 11 to two. They scored the opening basket, and Silverado has been on now a 12-0 run. And this is a position Losinger has not been in in these playoffs yet. Losinger now scores a basket. That basket by Donnell Wright as they break the pressure. And that's something that Coach Reggie Morris Jr. talked about in the locker room, how to effect effectively break that press. Looks like a travel, no call. Dorrell right again, a strip. What we're seeing is a lot of hands here. Right needing to be aware. Shot put up from three-point range, doesn't go. Rebound comes down to Silverado, taken down by Brandon Price. Losinger gets numbers back, though. Losinger now in a zone defense, it would appear. Well, no, actually switched it. They're switching out of the zone to man-to-man. -to -man. That shot, wild shot thrown up over the back. We're going to get a foul call. That's the first foul of the game called against Silverado, and that's going to go on number 33, Brandon Price. Well, he'd been aggressive off those boards, and that time the call going against him as he'll check out of the ball game at this point, and uh, Silverado will go smaller, if you will, and with Eric Butler coming in at uh, six with three. They'll continue to press. Uh, Left of the floor pass, not working for the Olympians. That's the second time they've attempted that pass, and the second time it's been, well, they've attempted it more than twice. That's the second time, however, that it's been stolen. And that shot put up and in on the inside by number 24, Dominique Priestley, back to a 10-point lead at 14-4. At the 3.20 mark of quarter number one. Terrell with the dribble, gives it off to Wilson. Wilson brings it over, finds Donnell Wright. At the, at the free throw line, Wright puts it on the ground. He drives to the basket. He's going to be fouled on the play. 
That foul is going to go against Davis, and that may not be a bad idea is to attack Davis, Dave. Well, you've got to do something to turn the tide with 3.06 to go in the quarter. And uh, he blocked one shot already, but of course blocked it with a shot on the outside from the much smaller Sheldon Wilson, as you see a couple of Hawks fans here. So the other right, Donnell Wright, asked to connect on some free throws. Wright's first free throw comes off. He'll shoot another one. A score still 14-4. 306 left in the first quarter. Wright misses a pair. Donnell Wright, that is. That shot put up from the outside. It goes. That's a three-pointer. So right now it's a 17-4 game. And if they get that three-pointer going, it is going to be a long night for losing her. That shot doesn't go for Donnell Wright. Follow put up and in by, I mean, Dorrell Wright, the shot didn't go for a Donnell Wright, shot did go. Another stop and pop. That's number five, Vince Alvarado. Vince Alvarado with the deuce. So right now you got everybody hitting for them. That pass thrown away. Well, what you're seeing here is a smaller team in Silverado doing what they have to do. They are working all over the court, and I mean on both ends of the court. They are playing good defense. It has nothing to do with the fact that they are playing close to their home court. They are just outworking losing her on both ends of the court right now with 2.10 to go in quarter number one. A lot of time left, though, the question is that shot put up from way downtown. That's a show Rebound shot. control. Second rebound comes down to the Olympians, taken down by Donnell Wright. Olympians looking to push. Olympians can't seem to find their flow. That, that layup comes off the front. Here's a push now by the Hawks. They get it inside, score the basket by Alvarado, 21-6. And right now, the Olympians are in a deep hole here in the first quarter. That helps their cause at 21-8. Friends, don't fret. We got a lot of basketball left. This is only the first quarter. They play four. And these folks out here in Phelan, California, want to know when this game comes. I'm afraid you can't get it out here, folks. You can only get it back in Lawndale. By the Olympians. Again, another bad pass. Demetrius Doby tried to hit Dorrell Wright with the long pass. It simply wasn't long enough. And right now, they're getting to every loose ball. And they are hitting their shots from outside. That shot put it up. It's going to be a, what's the, they're going to call an offensive foul. They call charge on the play against the Olympians. Well, I guess, Rufus, it seemed to all go wrong when that blocking foul was called earlier on in the, uh, early in the quarter as we've got 49 and 8, 10 seconds to go. In what has been a nightmare of a playoff quarter for the losing Olympians, the type of quarter that they have not played in their first three playoff games, discounting the third quarter in the game against Long Beach Poly. But then again, they haven't seen this kind of competition either, perhaps. And this time they try to go length of the court. That is Silverado losing her interception. Losing it pretty soon will start to do their thing. That shot doesn't go. Taken down again. I think the losing's best approach is going to be to attack the basket. And right now, Silverado is on fire. They simply cannot miss. They're doing it from all over the court. Think you got to pull it out. There's the attack to the basket. Get a blocking call against Silverado. Boy, they've got a huge 18 point lead with 12.6 left here in the first quarter. And a lot of time, but of course, fans out here in this part of the high desert are anticipating playing at the pond against Eisenhower. The other half of the bracket tonight, Eisenhower and Oxnard playing for the right to go to the regional and the CIF. And here, of course, losing her. And Silverado 
And uh, these fans feel if they could play against Eisenhower, that would make it an all desert final for the CIF Southern Section Regional. That's the third free throw missed by the Olympians. Bars comes in as Demetrius Doby goes out. Second free throw, no good as well. Kelsey Bars follow, no good. His tip goes though. Losing it now, needing to get back defensively. So, they get two shots in the last 12 seconds. They don't convert, but after one quarter, the Hawks of Silverado are taking a commanding 26 to 10 lead over the Losinger Olympians as Coach Reggie Morris tries to get his troops riled up and awakened. Well, in, on a positive sense, you can say you can't do much worse than uh, they did in the first quarter. Not much coming together for the losing Olympians. It seemed to go bad once the uh, blocking foul was called. That seemed to take, I mean, it's an early call and it was only two to nothing at the point, but uh, it basically allowed the Silverado Hawks to kind of get into the defensive flow. It seems like they click off of the pressure defense. Losing your Olympians had the right idea for part of that quarter in trying to break the press because as Rufus being a coach, as you well know, if you break a press, you get a three on one, you get a fast break opportunity. They had the right idea, but give Silverado the credit. They got people back and denied some of the long passes. And it was that pressure that kept losing her from getting into any kind of offensive rhythm in quarter number one. And uh, with eight minutes uh, till halftime, Starting quarter number two, they are going to have to start to turn things around right about now and make it a contest because, as we said, this is a position that they have not been in in any of their three previous playoff wins. Well, the Hawks, what can you say in that first quarter? I don't know if we've got a line on their shooting, but, man, they were hot something fierce. That shot from three-point range doesn't go. The tip doesn't go either for the Olympians. Good attempt, though. I think we're going to see a different defensive strategy this time employed by the Olympians as they leave the guy open. They run it, everybody. Shot from the outside. Rebound taken down by the Olympians. And that's what you ask yourself. Can Silverado stay that hot the whole game? Well, in the first quarter, that shot would have dropped. Doral right at this point, 0 for 4 at the free throw line. And... Uh, four points and four rebounds. So the Olympians come out Actually, very no. aggressively there to start the second quarter though. Very aggressively. Now they're showing full court pressure. Olympians still. Too much action going to the basket. I view momentarily blocked by the official. Quite frankly, they couldn't see, of course, they should have been looking at the monitor instead. What's going to happen is that number 33 is going to the line. That's Brandon Price, and he's going to shoot a pair. Well, it was Donnell Wright uh, called for that particular foul. And for a short team, well, they do a lot of fakes inside. It's a team that uh, they've been able to fake the losing Olympians out uh, in this first half and get some good, I guess you could call them high percentage shots. Falalu Tuioni comes in for Donnell Wright. Second free throw. Put up and in. And of course, as we mentioned before the game, losing her is going to be without Daryl Street tonight, a big body that they could use at certain points, but they go to Tuioni right here. Still pressure by Silverado. Losing her gets it across. Knocked out of bounds by Silverado, be losing her ball to inbound. And uh, on the out of bounds play, I think it was interesting before the game, losing her, of course, a much bigger team on the layup line, losing her before the referees come, of course, a lot of slam dunks, a lot of above the rim play. You didn't see that as that ball thrown out of bounds. You didn't see that from Silverado. Another just, miss, I'm sorry, another miscue by the Olympians. You're right, Dave, in terms of the mindset. But, again, but I, I guess reason. The, well, the, the point I'm trying to make is they, they do it in terms of full-court hustle. 
And as uh, their coach, Reggie Morris Jr., said before the ball game, there's a reason why they're 28 and one and won their league for the second straight year. Quite frankly, they're penetrating the lane too much. It is now a 20 point lead at 30 to 10 in favor of Silverado. Right now, they're making that 28 and one look legit. That shot knocked away. And we're gonna have a travel call against Silverado. Lucky break there for the Olympians. Much to the chagrin of the crowd up here off the 138, only one road leading back to the main highway <laughs> as uh, we made, made our way up here today for this ball game. But they've been a vocal crowd. Of course, they support uh, the school coming from the Victorville area and would like to see their team play at the Arrowhead Pond. So would losing our Olympian fans. But losing has got uh, Got a little mountain to climb. <clears throat> Nearly a turnover. Losing her now going with some size. They essentially have one pure guard on the floor, and that's Wilson, along with four forwards. You got two Ioni on the floor. You got Kelsey Bars, along with Dorrell Wright and Donnell Wright. And this, of course, one of the more vocal crowds that we've experienced, that foul charge against Brandon Price. That's his second in disagreement with the uh, partisan crowd here. That's the fourth team foul on Silverado. I think if you're the Olympians, you want to get this lead cut to about 10. That foul is going to be on number 20 of Silverado. And of course, we know that number 20 is Josh Brown. That's right now. Go ahead, Dave, I'm uh, sorry. Uh, this, uh, easy, but it's gonna be his first and the 15 foul, but yeah, your point well taken, Rufus. If you get it at least down to 10 or a single digits, gives him a shot. Well, that's the first two there. We've got six minutes, just over six left here in the first half. Nearly a travel there. Silverado now cooling off perhaps a little bit. There's the outlet there. Dorrell right shot doesn't go, the follow doesn't go either. They take it off the board. Tough break for the Olympians on that one, fans. That ball went down twice, Dave, but it wouldn't stay down. Of course, the rule is it has to go through the net. Tuioni takes it down. Tuioni stripped with it. Now they're going to call a foul on Filalu Tuioni, saying that he pushed, perhaps with the body, not with the hands, but he rolled him out of bounds. Referee saw it called a foul against the Olympians. And it's interesting, someone in our Lawndale Community Cable truck said, oh, he stepped out of bounds, he stepped out of bounds. Well, that's what the truck saw, but uh, the official there on the play didn't see it. And at 5.23 to go, it's the foul on Tuioni. 16 foul for Losinger. They get the ball out, there's a break for the Olympians. Nice soft shot put up and in by Dorrell Wright. It's 30-14 and 16 with 5.20 left. Fans, I tell you, there's a lot of time right now. Losing the defense, needing the tight. That shot's gonna be long as well. That rebound taken down by Bars. He gets it off to Wilson. Wilson pushes it up, slows it down, lets his offense come to him. That shot from distance doesn't go for the Olympians. No rebounders in place. Tuioni out of position, pushes in the back. That's going to be team foul. The scoreboard shows six. I don't think, well, that's a 17 foul. Well, an interesting note with 5.03 to go and the score 30-14. That bucket for Doral Wright was his first of the night. He hadn't been able to mark on the free throw line and he just uh, scored at a 5.03 mark. In ball games that uh, you've seen losing or win, one pattern that you've seen is you've seen them in their first three ball games shut down the opposing player's hottest offensive player. Well, tonight, turnaround is fair play. You see the Silverado Hawks shutting down Dorrell Wright, who, of course, is losing her, his hottest offensive player. As it sends Ash Dabas to the free throw line, shooting the one and one. Dabas' first free throw up and in. A Fundamentally very sound, Silverado Hawks. And fundamentals will win out every time. Dabas, of course, with uh, something with that right hand, we're told possibly a broken thumb before the ball game. It doesn't seem to affect his shooting there. 
as it's back to an 18 point lead. So losing her head at 16 with a chance to bring it to 14, four point swing. Still full court pressure being shown. They double the ball, there's a reach. Good call by the official, that's Byron Ferguson with the call, says they'll take it on the baseline. That foul on Eric Butler of Silverado. Slam dunk by Dorrell Wright off the inbounds play. Well, it gives the losing of faith for something to cheer about. It does, but the Silverado faithful would say, look at the scoreboard with 442. Wright leaves his feet again to get it inbounds. Losing or not being alert to the opportunity that the ball was loose and they had a chance at it. They're playing a little more, a little less tense, you could say. They're playing with a little, even though they're still, they're trailing by 16, 32, 16, 4, 36 to go. Losing are playing with a little more spirit and confidence at this point. Uh oh, you got a guy open down here underneath, still not as sharp as you would, would hope, though, is what I'm seeing right now, Dave. Not clicking quite on all eight cylinders. That shot put up from way outside, falls short. And out hustled to it was Terrell, and now we're gonna have a timeout taken. Losinger cannot get the key loose balls if they're gonna chip away at this 16 point deficit, Dave, with 426 left. You know, one of the things as we go to timeout on Lawndale's Community Cable Channel 22, that I like to tell my guys, Dave, when you see a situation like this, it's almost like, okay, hey, I tell my guys, look, you've taken their best shot, all right? They can't do any better than this, so now, Let's go. And I think that that's almost the attitude Lusinger has to have right now that Silverado can't get any better than this. Well, something about you basketball minds have in common. Coach Reggie Morris Jr. before the ball game telling the Olympians a story of when he played at Howard back east, how they played at LSU. And uh, he told this great big moral story about how they weren't intimidated and they earned the respect of the other team, LSU. He said, well, we lost by 25 points, but we earned their respect. Well, uh, here tonight, of course, uh, he wouldn't want to see a 25-point deficit or a, or a deficit even by one point, but uh, he'd like to see the team start to click a little better. Now the foul called there on the Olympians. Let's see, it looks like this one. Let's see the indication. That foul's on Dorrell Wright. If I'm not mistaken, that may be Dorrell second. Yeah, it's number two right now, team, second personal foul. The team is over the limit, and Jamie Lester, a moment ago, I started to say, you're gonna need to start calling for a fair catch when he shoots, because he's just pumping it from uh, Amney a three-quarter court. But that time, some good fakes on his drive to the hoop. Some old-fashioned ball fakes and able to draw the foul. If he takes it straight up, he gets thrown back at him, but uh, able to get to the line. Free throw is good. They make both free throws. I'm not sure they've missed a free throw tonight. Not according to my book, they have it. There it is. Knocked out of bounds. And, and again, again Losinger's had the right idea as far as how to break the press, but Silverado getting, being very aggressive on the floor, running all over the court, and getting back. They're going to send a freshman, Jeff Barnes, in here right now as a substitute. That shot put up by... Donnell Wright doesn't go, rebound taken down by the Hawks. They lead by 18, their largest lead was 20 at 30 to 10. And here's Jamie Faircatch Lester. <laughs> Should be watching here, turn around, move on the inside, rebound taken down by Dorrell Wright. Fake there, doesn't fool anybody. Demetrius Doby fouled on the play. And he's gonna go to the line to shoot two. Of course, the line hasn't been an easy task for the Olympians tonight. In my book, they've missed four free throws, but here's a chance for Doby to score two with no time going off the clock. Well, they got Osh Dob Dobas on that foul for um, Silverado Hawks. And some good interior passing that time, leading to the free throw opportunities, but uh, losing the Olympians tonight. Well, that's five free throws for sure. Five. You're right. Missed. And you can't do that when you're trying to climb the, the El Cajon Pass. 
Well, you can't do that anytime. Quite frankly, that's why they call them free throws. Second one rattles in. So it makes it a 34-17 game now. Going out for the Olympians is number one, Demetrius Doby. Kelsey Bars comes in. Olympians trying to show some pressure. They get some pressure on the ball. Not enough to bother. Push off. My goodness. Ferguson, the ref, it happened right in front of him. In fact, well, I won't put it on Ferguson alone. There are three refs. That shot put up and in by Demetrius Doby. Could be the sign of good things to come as it's now a 34-20 game. You can run the lane, fans, after a made basket, and that's what Silverado does. Losing her now, showing some pressure. The thing with pressure is that guys tend to leak open on you, and that's what you got to protect against. Don't leave your feet on the fake. That's a travel. Call it travel, double dribble. Yeah, son, that's what you did. Come on, get a ball up and let's go. Rufus, referee, Washington, right on the spot. <laughs> All right, so losing it now. Under three minutes left in the first half. Trailing by 14. They trail by as much as 20. They got a chance to cut it to 12, if not 11. That shot put up doesn't go for him. Tough shot there. I think if you're going to go inside, you want to go inside to your horses. That shot from outside comes off. Rebound taken down, a lot of contact, no foul. Olympians can push here. That's Terrell pushing. He kicks it out, gets it over to Dorrell Wright. A lot of contact. You got another foul call, and now you're starting to get whining by the Hawks. Well, and that they... foul is going to put losing her now into the one and one. And here's where free throws become really critical, especially hitting the front end of the one and one, Dave. With 2.25 to go, Dorrell Wright trying to mark from the free throw line for the first time. Big free throw. Losing her down now by 13 fans. I said if they could get it to 10, it'd be a whole different game coming out at the half. Down by 12 now. And again, they're coming back with full court pressure defense. We haven't seen Dobbins in a while, Dave. This is true. We yeah. know that his hand, we're talking about Osh Dobbins fans, big guy for Silverado, number 21. Hand was taped, don't know if the hand is bothering him. That shot goes up and in. That's a nice fake by Brandon Price. They got some good little uh, hang time in the air and some fakes with uh, 155 to go. Shot over here from three point range, goes up, doesn't drop for the Olympians. Again, with Osh not being in there, perhaps he should be attacking the basket, but they choose not to. Baseline cut off beautifully by Terrell. Silverado looks inside. Now they look at the three. Now they go inside. So they extend it back to a 16-point lead, losing their head it down to 12. Again, I would suggest and submit to you that they think that what they need to do is attack the basket. Well, I know you need threes to get back in it, but with the size that they have, We're gonna have a foul call on the play. That's it. Well, what is, is it gonna be what charged it? against Dominic Priestley or is it going no. against Donnell Wright? It's going against Donnell Wright and Priestley's gonna to go to the line to shoot two. So losing her with the one, at the 108 mark, uh, had it down to 12, but uh, have seen Silverado with the last four points on what Rufus Washington considers some questionable offensive play that last time they uh, losing was facing a zone. And of course, uh, the aggressive play by Priestley leading to the steal. And he'll go to the free throw line. Whole host Two. of substitutions getting ready to come in for Silverado this last minute eight. Well, Tuioni comes on for Donnell Wright. Coach making a foul situation substitution, not wanting Donnell to pick up that third foul here in the first half and it is back now to a 17 point lead at 39 22. Mm 
And so Verado has yet to miss from the free throw line tonight. They lead by 18 at 40-22, 108 left here in the first half. They're 14 out of 14 from the free throw line. Rusinger has not had, not been, line's not been quite as charitable for them, shall Terrell we say. swings it over to Wilson. They get inside. That shot doesn't go, but the follow shot goes. Under a minute now, clock running. Losing again, showing some semblance of full court pressure. Silverado showing that they're not bothered by it at this stage. They hold a 16 point lead, shot clock in effect. 20 seconds left on the clock. That shot from three point range, it goes. These guys are on fire, Dave. They simply cannot miss. Well, they haven't missed too much tonight, that's for sure. It's a 19 point lead. Dorrell's shot from three is up and in. Let's see if we can get a stop here. It's a 16 point game. It'd be nice if we could push off there, no call. They're keeping the ball out top. It's over here playing good defense. They bothered that shot, so it comes off. And so, in a bit of a break there, to end the half, Lusinger will go into the locker room trailing by a score of 43 to 27 as they play to a 17-17 second quarter, actually, all right? as we see on Lawndale's Community Cable Channel 22. Before we go to the break, your thoughts about what Losinger has to do in the second half, Dave? Well, they've got to almost uh, pretend as though the score is 0-0 zero, zero and they're coming out to start the second half and do what they failed to do at the beginning of the first half, come out and be the team that takes it to Silverado in the first five minutes of quarter number three, and uh, they might have a chance to get back in the ball game. They, as, as you noted, they were 17-17 in quarter number two, but they still trail by 16 due to the rather disastrous first quarter. So again, how long the remainder of this season will last if the losing Olympians get to the Arrowhead Pond will depend probably on what they're gonna do in the first five minutes of quarter number three. Well, fans, with that, we're gonna go to halftime on Lawndale's Community Cable Channel 22. This production brought to you in conjunction with the good folks at Hawthorne Cable Usage Corporation. As you enjoy the halftime break, we assure you that Scott Goodman will open the second half with, first, with statistics from first half action on Lawndale's Community Cable Channel 22. All right, fans, we're back here at Serrano High School, home of the Diamondbacks. However, tonight it's the home of the Silverado Hawks as they host the semifinal playoff game. They, of course, with a 43-27 lead coming out of the locker room for some first-half stats and a first-half synopsis. Let's go to Scott Gutman over on sidelines. Scott, go away. Or take it away. <laughs> well, Rufus and Dave, as you've noticed, losing her struggle tremendously. They are combined two for six from the free throw line and a total of nine turnovers. And on the other hand, Silverado is a combined 12 from 12 from the line. That is the key difference of this ball game thus far. And as you've also noticed, Luziger has not dominated on the offensive boards as they tend to throughout the playoffs. It's gonna be a tough task for the Luziger Olympians to get back in this game. It's been Silverado thus far. Back to you, Rufus and Dave. <clears throat> All right, Scott, thanks as always. Scott, they're giving us an excellent perspective in terms of what occurred in the first half, and we'll now bring you second half action as the Hawks will be inbounding. They now will be going to our right, losing or bringing the pressure here right off the bat. Of course, that's what they've got to do. They've got to eat away early at this lead, Dave. Most definitely. In close of the first half, you saw the uh, Silverado Hawks using their quickness all over the court, a lot of ball fakes, and the reason why they've got those 12 for 12 free throws is they're able to get to the line. 
Man-to-man -man defense being employed now by the Olympians. Ball hawking man-to-man -man defense. That shot from way outside. Rebound taken down by Dorrell Wright. Gives it off to Myron Terrell. Terrell out top. Every possession now is so critical for the Olympians. 15 and a half minutes, play. short time. Bars gets it down low. They're gonna call Bars with the travel on the play. So 15 minutes and 14 seconds, possibly in the season for losing or unless they're able to turn it around. And we mentioned at the half, first five minutes are gonna be critical. They've had a good defensive stop, but not a good offensive set. Their leading score at the half, Doro Wright with 14. And most of those in the sec all in the second quarter, as a matter of fact. Good defense being played by the Olympians. There you have a travel by Dobbins on that play. So you got a travel on both ends. And leading scorer for Silverado, Vince Alvarado, 13 points. And he had three triples in that first half, accounting for his 13. Block and play, block called on the play as Wilson attacks the basket, something that you heard me call for a little bit more there in the first. Looks like the Olympians are coming out this period doing just that. You get a couple of things to happen. One, <laughs> it's a higher scoring, higher percentage scoring opportunity. And two, you're likely to draw fouls. That free throw put up and in and by the, Wilson. Makes it a 15 point game, Dave. Go ahead. got three personal fouls on Brandon Price, one of the starters for Silverado. So their head coach, Kurt Herbst will perhaps look to sub him pretty soon. Second free throw, no good. However, rebound taken down. Now they get right from the outside. That shot doesn't go, but Wilson shot put up in there. So Luger gets three off of that play. They're now down by 13, 645 left in the third. Again, pressuring all over the court. Some contact there, the officials disdain it. More pressure, losing it now really putting bodies on Silverado. I think right now what they've decided to do is, hey, let's test and see what these guys are made out of, see if they can stand up to the full Monty. Olympia falls down, that was Wilson who fell down and taking advantage of it was number 24. However, now we got a foul by Alvarado as they bring the ball up. Number 24, of course, is Priestley. Well, that time, uh, Wilson trying to fight through the screen got uh, picked off, and uh, Dominic Priestley averaging nine and a half a ball game, first three-pointer of the night, putting it back up to a 16-point lead. Nearly turned over. They get it back, a lot of hands. Now they get it away. Three-point shot put up and in by Dorrell Wright. Again, back to a 13-point lead, losing her needing a defensive stop at this point. They can't allow the pressure to cause them to lose the opportunity. Here it is. And you got to call that foul. A right, good call there by referee Byron Ferguson against Dorrell Wright. Now that's going to be his third, but of course at 5.53 to go in quarter number three, he's pretty much got to play all out. Of course, back still not 100%. He's looked good tonight, but... Uh, well, I'm not sure you want him on Dobbins, though, and that's what they got right now in the matchup. The losing will be very aggressive. Good block there by Dorrell Wright. However, again, it's a tale of offensive rebounds as it has been all night, Dave. And as it's been for most of the playoffs, particularly the Long Beach Poly game. No rebound is there, but Donnell Wright, Dorrell Wright feeling it rather, and it's gonna go out of bounds off the miscue by number 33, Brandon Price. It's a 15 point game. Losing as close, closest they've been in a long time is 12, Dave. Yes, and that was with about two minutes to go in the first half before Silverado scored the last four of the half. Wilson shot from three-point range is good. Makes it back to a 12-point deficit again, close as the Olympians have been. Right now, what's gonna be key is for the guards to apply some pressure to take 
some of the heat off of the big man. That's a charge. Excellent call by the official there on that play. That's Rich Porter, the head official. And that's going to be, if it's on Brandon Price, it's going to be number four. Price lowered the shoulder right in front of the official. So at 5.02 to go in quarter number three, Brandon Price of Silverado will have to have a seat. Some of the fans still getting back here from their halftime hot dogs walking in front of us. Losinger gets it across now. They push it in the attack. Knocked out of bounds. Right idea. That was the strategy that Coach Morris had talked to him about in the locker room before the game. If they pressure you, create the three-on-one situations and get it. Wilson shot put up, doesn't go. Tione comes down with it. He goes up. He's going to be fouled on the play. He's going to go to the line to shoot, too. Now we got to look. Some fisticuffs between the... Not so much fisticuffs. Let me, let me amend that, first of all, fans. Pushing and shoving is what I should have said. Looks like Kelsey Bars and can't quite see who it was. I think it was Ash, Ash Dabas. Was it Dabas? Yes, it was. Uh, do we possibly have that in the truck? We got a... So at the end of that, I don't know if anybody's been teed up, but of course, this is the one, it could be a double foul situation, but this is one situation you don't want to get uh, disqualified from because if you do go on to the next round, you are out. Uh, and that foul was charged against Davish, putting Tuioni on the line. Tuioni's shot comes off long, hits the back of the iron. Again, the story tonight for the Olympians. That which has been most difficult for him has been free throw shooting. We're going to have a 20 second timeout by losing our foul situation. Not looking, one thing that does not look good for Silverado now at 4.46 to go in quarter number three. They've got Brandon Price with 10 points on the bench and Osh Dabas, who's at the assignment against Doral Wright on the uh, bench now with three, with uh, Falalo Tuioni, the junior, who you'll see next season playing for uh, Mike Witt. Well, on the football team, shooting free throws like a football player right now, uh, missing his first. He'll get one more. Gives us a chance to tell you that you're, uh, of course, watching Lawndale Community Cable Channel 22, the second and fourth Wednesday of the month. The Planning Commission airs on Lawndale Community Cable. And so if you want to find out what's going on in the city of Lawndale, I suggest you have your dial tuned to Channel 22, where you get the Planning Commission on the second and fourth Wednesday of each month. And of course, and the website. The website is, what is it? www.lawndalecity.org. Or you can go to www.lawndalecity.org and subscribe to the Channel 22 e guide. That way, fans, you'll always know when these games are being broadcast, as well as all the other fine programming that is brought to you on Lawndale's Community Cable Channel 22. And the e-guide is sent to you, e meaning email, every week comes right to your mailbox. That free throw doesn't go for the Olympians. They don't come away with it. They are pressuring the ball all over the court, though. Looks like they'll be able to get back defensively, and they do. Right now, they trail by 12. And this is a situation where they miss Daryl Street, who's not here. This evening, they could use another big body in there right now. They're playing a tough man-to-man -to -man defense behind the screen. That shot put up, doesn't go. Protected underneath, losing it, comes away with it. Terrell with the ball, they can slow, get a good shot. Terrell's three-pointer, doesn't go. Rebound taken down by Alvarado. Might have looked for a better shot than that one that time. And Alvarado makes him pay on the other end. Right about that, Rufus. It usually does happen. What could have been a 10-point game becomes 14. Exactly. I thought that shot was put up just a little bit too quickly by the Olympians. Tuioni sets a high screen. Now we got it over. Wilson, pop fakes, puts up a short one. Slam dunk off the offensive rebound by Dorrell Wright. And again, it's back to a 12-point game. 330 left here in the third. Dorrell Losinger White. Losinger having to get everybody back. I know you want to pressure, but you cannot afford to give away easy basket opportunities like that. Now you can push. Dorrell calling for it. 
Spin move on the inside, doesn't go. Tough break for the Olympians, taken down out of the air by Dorrell Wright. He goes baseline, looking for a basket. Fall away jumper, doesn't go. Kelsey Bars comes up with it, his shot doesn't go. Olympians get three chances to bring it to 10. Can't convert now, can they get back defensively? Gonna get a charge and call. There's a break for the Olympians. Well, that uh, charge is gonna be charged against Jamie Lester. Just his first personal foul. Rufus a 250 to go in quarter number three. If they gave points for effort, losing her would have had to have gotten about 10 on, on that last uh, attempt. Getting them, getting the rebounds, getting the steal at midcourt. Just not getting them able to drop. Trying to cut it to 10 right here, trailing 50 to 38. Losing is still unable to get this lead to less than 12. They've had it at 12 a couple of times. Can they this time? Foul's going to be called there as Dorrell Wright takes his drive to the basket. Wright's going to go to the line to shoot two. As we say tonight before Dave, the, con the line has been unkind to the Olympians. Well, it certainly has. Dorrell Wright with 19 points, a chance to make something of it right here. But uh, you talk about Dorrell Wright going for the to the line as that foul is charged against Eric Butler, his third for Silverado. He's also going to Division I of the NCAA. And at the 236 mark of quarter number three, he has basically just got to play all out right at this point, showing some scouts who are probably here what he's made of. Wright converts too, and I can tell you, Dorrell is a nice young man, comes from a nice family, very respectable. I had a good pregame talk with his dad as I normally do before each game the last couple of weeks. That shot put up and in by number three, Kyle Lewis. Takes it back out to a 12-point lead. Right from three-point range, his shot doesn't go. And the foul on Tuioni. That's losing your second foul here in the second half. Silverado has six. So that's another reason now to attack the basket. You can get in the one and one on the next foul. It's at the 214 mark. Should give losing him an advantage. Losing need to get back. Losing a need to get back. That shot put up. It's short. Rebound taken down by the Olympians. Push it. Go to the glass. Go all the way. Make them, make them foul you. That shot put up. Doesn't go. Doby controls it. He goes and he's fouled on the play. And now losing her is in. The one and one, however, this won't be a one and one. This will be an opportunity for Demetrius Doby to convert a three point play. Well, you figure they got to drop sooner or later. The Olympians with some gallant efforts on the boards. They do have a height advantage. They've had it all game and now showing some uh, ability to use it as that was foul number four on Ash Davis. Doby converts the free throw. And fans, we've got ourselves a new ball game. We've got two minutes. Left. There's a steal by Demetrius Doby. Kicks it out. Let's take advantage of this opportunity is what the coaching staff is saying. That's not me saying it because I don't want to be accused of being a homer. Tuioni goes up and in. But fans, I would say to you, as Silverado is forced to call a timeout as their 20-point lead now down to seven on Londell's Community Cable Channel 22. Fans, Dave Marks, as you know, I don't need to tell you, the voice of KJLA News in the afternoon. Ask him if he's shown any love to the Luzga Olympians. Ask him what do they have to do for Dave to mention the Olympians just one time on KJLH. To show them the love that he properly should as he comes out each and every week. That's what we want to know, Dave. We don't want you to be a homer like you accused me of being. But can you just tell Southern California once, take 30 seconds, 10 seconds, and mention the Olympians on some future broadcast. That's the question all Olympian fans are asking themselves right now. That's what they're asking? That's what they're asking. They, they really want to know that? They really want to know. They want to know they why. They want to know where. Show us the love. That's what they're saying, Dave. Show us the love as Losinger has gotten back into this game. We knew they could do it, and they have done it. Well, I, I tell you what. One thing that I do at my, at my other gig is I, I do the I do the news at my gig. Unfortunately, I don't do sports at the other gig. But uh, this is news. Well, I, if they win the CIF state champ, if they win the CIF uh, Southern Regional, 
at the Arrowhead Pond. That would be news, being a team from the South Bay, from South Central that uh, goes that far. Certainly if they win the CIF State, I think that would be news. Good pressure D again by the Olympians, and you get a ball handling turnover by Silverado. That was number 13, Richard Collins with the turnover. And you got the official as the, to use your term and properly so, the players are getting a little chippy with the officials and they're telling them to back off. That three-pointer put up, that comes short for the Olympian side. Goes out of bounds, whistle blows. It will be Silverado ball. Big opportunity there. It doesn't go for the Olympians. We've got 129 left fans inbounding. Will be Silverado. Losing it right now. The challenge is not to let anybody get behind you. You got to read the whole floor. You got to see the whole floor. That's the problem they're creating is those situations where they're letting them get a guy behind you. That's a breakdown, Dave. I mean, just call it like it is. That is a breakdown. You cannot let that happen. Well, yeah, that, that's a risk you run when you press of getting that three on one. And we saw in the first half uh, what uh, Silverado was able to do in trying to thwart the Olympian press. Well, it's the, it's the same principle as in football when you know a team's going to throw the Hail Mary. The one thing the defensive backs are told is that no matter what you do, no matter what you do, do not let the receiver get behind you. That's true. You don't want to give up the touchdown. That shot will be off, taken down by Doby, and you're going to get a foul call on number 20. Number 20, of course, as we know, is Josh Brown. And, of course, losing her again, shooting free throws. Well, losing her with the 56-second mark has outscored Silverado 18-7 to in this quarter. And if they were hitting their free throws, it would be a little tighter. But they've cut a, shaved a significant lead off the scoreboard. First free throw front end of the one and one is good for Dorrell Wright. Six point game fans, this is the closest it's been since we got off the bus, Dave. Now it's a five point game. And the fans of Silverado just a little bit shell shocked right now as they've seen. Three fourths, that's a block. And that call goes against Dorrell Wright, and I think that's going to be Dorrell's fourth foul. And if it is, you got to take Dorrell out. Dorrell thought it was a good block right now. What's key is that Dorrell's got to compose himself, and he seems to be doing that. Somebody needs to alert Coach Morris that that's four. Do you have four, Dave? Yes, that's, that's four fouls we have according to this book. But uh, And we see Juanika Bryant. Bradley, rather, excuse me, Juanika Bradley, young lady who handles scoring for the Olympians. Very, very much on her job, very quickly alerting Coach Morris to the fact that that was four fouls and on that, Durrell. That free throw by Eric Butler on the line broke a 10-0 run losing her had been on. Durrell Wright had been four for four from the free throw line. Two free throws converted there. Takes it back to a seven point game. 47 seconds left here in the third. Big third period for the Olympians. Had a chance to talk to Juanika's dad, who is a air personality at 92.3. That three pointer looks short, but it's taken down by the Olympians. They penetrate inside, they get it off. Put up, doesn't go. They keep fighting for it. Now we're going to have a foul call on the play, and that's going to send Kelsey Bars to the line. Bars will go to the line. I think he was in the act of shooting. Well, they call that foul on number 52, Jeff Barnes. Two shots is the indication. So it's a two-shot foul. You can't compose yourself. Takes a little bit of pressure off. First one is up and in. Back to a six point game. The closest the Olympians have been, Dave, is five. And they got a shot to do it right here again. 26 and two tenths seconds to go. Kelsey Barr. That one's gonna be long. You can see that when he left. Now what you wanna do is protect like they did at the end of the half and see if you can control the damage by keeping them from scoring here. Olympians literally have a foul or more to give. 
And if it looks like there's a scoring opportunity, there you are. Eight seconds left. Eight seconds. Good defense being employed by the Olympians. They let a guy get loose, and that's exactly what you didn't want to have happen. Big breakdown there defensively by the Olympians. Tough breakdown for the Olympians. Right there at the end makes it a nine-point game. It was six. So after three periods, fans, our score on Lawndale's Community Cable Channel 22. Silverado Hawks 57, Losinger 48, as Losinger scored 21 points there in the third, outscoring them by a margin of 21 to 14. Well, they at least uh, should make a competitive game of it heading into quarter number four. Dominic Priestley, three for three from field, from three-point land, 14 points. He leads the Silverado Hawks. Doriel Wright started out slowly, but has 23 points as uh, we start quarter number four. And of course, he is going to probably have to start that quarter on the bench with the four personal fouls. So eight minutes and a shot for one of these teams to play either Eisenhower or Oxnard for the finals in the CIF Division One Double A, which would be at the Pond of Arrowhead Pond in Anaheim. Eight minutes. Can the losing Olympians cut was what was once a 20-point deficit? and take the lead, or will Silverado hold on? Losing will get the ball as we start quarter number four, and it's 57-48. Well, they outscored them, as we noted to you, by seven in that period. They came out, they played aggressively the entire period. The big problem right now for the Olympians, Dave, it's no secret to anybody in the Olympian family, and that's the fact that Dorrell Wright has four fouls, and he starts the fourth period on the bench. Losing her still looking to get it inside. That shot put up by Wilson, a fourth shot, goes off the hands of the Olympians. It'll be Silverado's basketball. And not able to get anything going inside. They had to use most of the shot clock. Once again, this time they get back. That shot goes up, that rebound taken down. Inside, shot doesn't go, but Silverado got inside. Barnes, number 52, got inside of three Olympians that when rebounding position comes down with the offensive rebound. And one of the things when the story is told about this game as it relates to the Olympians, Dave, it will be a game that was decided in part one way or the other by the offensive rebounds controlled by a team that, at least on paper, we thought Losinger had a height advantage over. And well, I'll be honest with you, one of the rare things is that, and you don't normally see basketball teams do this, I think, uh, certainly you're left with the impression that Silverado understated the size of their players as the lead is now back out to 11. What, you mean you basketball coaches never do that? Well. Normally the size is overstated, all right, and you try to play head games, but rarely, if ever, have I seen it understated. That shot doesn't go by Dorrell Wright, but the follow by Kelsey Bars does. Back to a nine-point game, fans, under seven minutes left. The run has to come from somewhere, and this might be the beginning of it. We're finally going to get a foul call there, perhaps. Dorrell Wright would have been wise. This is what I call for them. Sometimes you got to get a ball up, all right? You got three guys out. You're, deal you're, travel you're dealing against pressure. I should say dealing when I'm dribbling against pressure. Now you got two shot situations, so Wright's first shot up and in makes it a eight point game now at 59 51. Alvarado now coming back in. He's a starting guard. He stays on. Let's see who he wants to come off. Coming off is number 32. So, two converted by Dorrell Wright. Wright now goes off defensively. So, Coach Morris doing an offensive-defensive substitution. 
What they got to do is make sure, again, as I said, you can't let guys get behind you. You cannot let that happen. Well, it's Eric Butler twisting and turning as he did get behind. 6.30 to go. Back to a nine-point game. Wilson with the ball on the far right side. Wilson passes into Fioni at the elbow. Fioni drives, puts it up in the end, and he's fouled on the play. Well, football players making those kind of moves. <laughs> the junior, Folalo Tuioni, always has a bunch of fans come out to support him at Losinger when they play home games there. That foul charged against the freshman, Jeff Barnes. The only shot comes off, Doby controls it though. He scores and now we've got another foul called on the play. Back to a five point game with a chance for it to be four, which would be as close as the Olympians have been. Demetrius Doby at the line with the big offensive rebound and put back. And now coach Kurt Hertz forced to put some of the starters back in. Dobie's free throw is going to be long. Olympia's tied up. Let's see, but he's going to get a foul call against Demetrius Dobie on the play. Good hustle by Demetrius. Nothing wrong with that. And Here's what I want to see the Olympians do, though. Here's what they got to do. All right, again, they got one man back. I think they, whatever they do, they got to be certain that two, three guys are back. Once again, here's what we got. You got a man wide open. You got to look and see this. Now they seem to be aware of the open guys. That shot put up and in by Alvarado. Is he missed a three-point or what? He has had four three-pointers tonight, 16 points. Takes it back to an eight-point game. Wilson's shot put up, doesn't go. Demetrius Doby on the board again. His shot doesn't go, but he's going to go to the line to shoot two. Looked like they got Dominic Priestley that time for the personal foul. You gotta appreciate the hustle, but uh, for the losing Olympians, they have got to make some of these free throws. They're getting the opportunity. 5.38 to go. Doby's first is good. So losing her, which struggled at the free throw line through, through, throughout the first half, now having a little more success at the line. Shows a seven point game. I didn't think it was seven. Elbow thrown, no call there. Right now, they got guys back. We get a charge call. And that's on number 32. Is that five, Dave, in your book? I believe it's Brandon Price, and that's no. uh, four or five. We don't see an indication yet. Now we see Juanika Bradley indicating it's five, but we don't see the clock, which is being controlled by the home team. Now we get the indication. Well, they take the timeout yeah. on the court. The, it's a timeout call by one of the teams, and I believe that is going to be five fouls on Brandon Price. Well, 5.30 to go. It's a uh, seven-point ball game. It is still well within reach of the losing or Olympians, but uh, they're going to have to play some good defense and get to the free throw line make some of these free throw opportunities that they're getting. Well, let's tell you who Price is. First of all, Price was one of their big guys at 6'4", a senior. He had eight points in the first half. However, he's done for now. He's done for tonight. All he can do is hope his teammates can carry forth without him. And right now, they've got a seven-point lead with 530 left in the game. So, some of the inside presence taken away now from Silverado. Let's see how they cope with that. That pass is gonna be thrown away. Quite frankly, it looked like Dorel Wright was held. Right idea, poor execution. Wright trying to tell he was whole. You gotta be aware, again, a guy dropping beneath, I, I'm gonna keep pointing it out. We could get a camera shot. This is what's hurting the Olympians right now. Get that foul called on Kelsey Bars. That's not important because that's only the 16th foul. So losing has been fortunate in that they've not put 
Silverado, which is an excellent free throw shooting team as we've seen into the one and one or the bonus until here. And even now, they're not in it yet. I think you got to go solid man to man here, you know. And that's what the Olympians are in. And you got to stay there. They're cheating and getting beat. At this point, you no longer can cheat. You got to play straight up and honest on your man, Dave. Well, right about that, Rufus. 4.44 to go now. That shot put up, it doesn't go. Losing her on the floor. Comes off, Demetrius Doby has it. And after a little pushing and shoving, it's gonna be a jump ball possession arrow favors. Silverado. Demetrius Doby has been a demon on the board tonight for the Olympians. Doby comes in at 6'3", he's a senior. This is a senior laden team for the Olympians. See a good, good pressure being applied by the Olympians. It needs to stay man pressure. However, Doby out top with the defense. They get it over. Among other things, good block there by Dorrell Wright. Wright attacks the basket. Wright slam dunk. Brings it back to a seven point game. Well, the dunk is pretty, Once but. Again, it you got to drop. They've got a guy behind the defense. Now they've got two guys behind the defense. Losing her has the seat. There's a charge there. You can call that with Braille. Perfect call. That should be a tech right there. And the ref is giving him a long, hard look, and properly so. And now he's calling him over. He's calling number 32 for Silverado. That's Jamie Lester. And what he's going to tell him right now, Dave, and I'll be real simple with your face on the ref, he's telling him to shut his mouth, okay? <laughs> as simple as that. Bottom line. <laughs> All right. Well, you got Jamie Lester and Osh Dabas with four fouls. Brandon Price is fouled out with four. 3.52 to go. Uh, you want cliches? It's do or die right now for the losing Olympians. They have got to mark on just about every offensive effort, and they've got to play almost flawless defense if they want to live to get to the Arrowhead Pond. Silverado, of course, has to just wait to get that uh, over the limit situation where they can hope to get to the free throw line where they've done well tonight. And for them, it's just a matter of playing smart possessions, not turning the ball over. Their fans the hand, calling for The defense. ball in the hands of, Dor of Dorrell Wright. Wright, with a lot of touches, gives it off to Myron Terrell. Terrell shot from way downtown, doesn't go. Olympians looking at the rebound, don't react to it. And now they're going to put Silverado in the one and one. Well, it's a good point you made, Rufus. Perhaps that the reason for some of their rebounding deficiencies on the boards that we've seen in these playoffs is you've got to get up. You don't uh, can't just uh, stand around. You have to make a reaction. And good things happen. And, of course, you put a good free throw shooter in Vince Alvarado, who's hit in his... Well, his first trip to the line tonight. And he misses. Rebound comes off. Taken down by the Olympians by Durrell. Durrell pushing it. Durrell gives it off to Kelsey Bars. His short jumper doesn't go. Tap doesn't go. Durrell still has it. He pulls it out to three-point range. Durrell right. Three-pointer is good. We now have ourselves a four-point game, fans, and a timeout being taken by the losing Olympians. Durrell right with 30 points. Day. It's a new day. Well, three minutes, 17 seconds to go. It's pretty much anybody's ball game. We said that uh, the losing Olympians had to score on just about every offensive possession. And Dorrell Wright, a man who one day you may be paying some money to see him. Well, you'll have to pay money to see him play in Division I probably, depending on how much. But you may pay money to see him well, play. Well, not as a booster you're not seeing. No. You mean at the gate you have to pay money, yes, right? Yes, th 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 thanks, thanks for correcting me there. But yeah, you have to pay, pay at, the, at the gate. But you're, you will see him in an NBA uniform possibly in four years, four or five years down the road. And right now, one of those situations where he's showing professional form. Four of five from three-point land, 30 points on the night. He started slow. They kept him in check in quarter number two. He broke out in the second quarter, had a good third quarter. He's doing it now with four fouls, 3.17 to go. 
and what was a 20-point blowout in the first half has become a good classic semifinal basketball game here in, in Phelan, California, way out on the other side of the El Cajon Pass, losing our Olympians and the Silverado Hawks. Winner here goes to the CIF Division 1AA Finals where they'll play either Eisenhower or Oxnard. Eisenhower the favorite team, but at this time of year, what you do off the court and in the brackets don't count, it's what you do on the floor, Rufus. Again, I'm gonna say the same thing. I think, I think this time, the Olympians make the adjustment and they don't let a defender get behind them. Now you gotta go man and you gotta guard the three-point line. There is a shot clock, play good D, guard the line. That's what they're doing. You cannot let your guy lose you right now. Silverado moving around the circle. 10 left on the shot clock. So far, losing employing good D. You don't want the foul now. They get it inside, that block. Takes it outside, shot put up, doesn't go. Olympians come down with it. That's Demetrius Dobie with the rebound. Dobie gets it up. Lots of time left on the clock. And you got a foul called there against number 24. That's Dominique Priestley, and that's going to send Myron Terrell to the line. Terrell with an opportunity here. Shooting two, mind you. We're in a double bonus now. Well, right. this is his first trip to the line, so of course, a little bit of nerves perhaps, but biggest free throws of the year right now from Iron Terrell with 2.21 to go. First one is good, that was the key one. That makes it a three, it's now a one possession game, Dave. Losing her, trailed at one point in the second quarter by a margin of 30 to 10. They have now made it a two point ball game. Win, lose, or draw, the Olympians have done themselves, their fan, their school, and their parents proud. And that Again, a good the move. pressure defense for the Olympians gets beat that time. Still two minutes left. Dorrell, right shot from way outside, doesn't go. We got plenty of time. You might want to advise Dorrell to look for a better shot. Now you got to get back. Referee disdains the call there. Let's see if the Olympians can get their man defense back. Now you got a timeout being taken by Silverado as they have a four point lead at 68-64 on Lawndale's Community Cable Channel 22. Let me take one more opportunity to remind you fans that if you wanna know when these games are broadcast, all you need to do is go to www.lawndalecity.org. That's the website and you'll see the program schedule. In addition, while you're at www.lawndalecity.org, why don't you subscribe to the Channel 22 e-guide? That way you will get a weekly email that gives you the programming schedule of Lawndale's Community Cable Channel 22 and of course, this production also brought to you by the good folks at the Hawthorne Cable Usage Corporation. Uh, in particular, Larry Bender and Chris Lay. These folks, Dave, have paid the rights fees, both communities, to, for us to be able to bring all four of these games and five, including the Hawthorne game that we did, to their fans. And I think they deserve, as much as anybody else, a round of applause. Well, Tom Strickfadden had the van floored doing all of 10 miles an hour, getting up and across the El Cajon Pass this afternoon to get here. A yeoman's effort, and the broadcast crew, and I'm sure losing her fans all over the place watching right now, would like to see at least one more game at the Arrowhead Pond. 1.56 to go, they trail by four, but they don't have the basketball right now. It's within reach, but uh, it's gonna take a little doing. In this second half, we've not seen very much of Donnell Wright. Nearly a turnover and a travel. Good call there. A travel that time on Jamie Lester. Now with 145, Rufus, I'm sure you know Losinger does have time. They don't need to rush a shot. Got to get something good, but they pretty much have to score on every possession one way or another. Shot clock in effect. Well, right now what you want to do more than anything else Let's go inside. That shot put up and in by the Ocean League Player of the Year, Dorrell Wright. It is a two-point ball game, minute and a half left. Can Losinger come all the way back? 
Westport here trying. They got the ball triple team everywhere, and they make the steal. That's Dorrell Wright with the steal. Now Dorrell Wright gives it back. He had to Could have been a foul call. And again, losing her gets beat. Big breakdown for the Olympians. They had a chance to, to tie it up. Instead, it's a four-point play that goes against them. Dorrell Wright shot goes up. Who's the foul going to be on? And we got a technical call as well, I believe. And a T. So Losinger is going to get to shoot four free throws, Dave. My goodness, and get possession of the basketball. Well, was it on the on the bench, the technical? Or no, was the technical was on one of the players on the floor who said something in the vicinity of Rich Porter. Porter had heard him. Now you have number 32 still out talking, and you may get yet another technical call against um, Jamie Lester. Jamie Lester right now, quite frankly, is a player out of control. His coach would be well served and well advised to get him off the floor, if only momentarily. And he, it, Go ahead, Dave, please. Well, I was saying he could co cost his team a trip to the championship round. This uh, with 56 seconds to go. Not a situation where any player, you want to see them lose their composure. But I tell you, for the losing or Olympians, Doral Wright with 32 points, He's just putting it on his shoulders right now. I mean, there's no secret. It's pretty much, uh, it's do or die, as I said, all the old cliches. But what a golden opportunity as Jamie Lester is fouled out of the ball game and also teed up. So Silverado's lost Brandon Price, Jamie Lester, Ash Dabas, who scored some big backdoor buckets playing with four fouls. So free throw opportunities and losing will get the ball. 56 and 6 tenths seconds to go. So they have a shot. Losinger is going to shoot four, if I'm not mistaken. The first one comes off for Dorrell Wright. He has another one. Converts the second. Now he'll step to the line to shoot two technicals, and Losinger will get the ball. Second one comes off. Wright missing critical free throws down the stretch here. He's got to be pumped with adrenaline right about now. But we told you all along, the line, which had been unkind. Dorrell Wright misses three out of four free throws that could have tied the game with 55 seconds left. Losing her now, losing her now needing a three-pointer to tie this game up. Clock, shot clock still in effect for Dave. Well, if the losing Olympians are not able to make the trip to Anaheim, it is going to be, in baseball, they have the saying, oh, those bases on balls. I think the saying tonight might be, oh, those missed free throws. A four-point opportunity from the line. Here's, here's what, as I used to say on uh, Jeopardy, here's what you lost. You lost a chance to tie the game and perhaps take the lead on a possession. Well, it's not totally dark for losing here because they do have the ball trailing by three. And I'm sure you would agree, Rufus, they don't need to chuck a three-pointer. They can take some time. But when it's what is given, you must take. And uh, Dorrell Wright loose, but you got to feel, uh, get, you have to have a little adrenaline. He looked loose, at least on the face, at least laughing it off. He's going to face a lot of pressure situation as his career goes on. But, uh, you know, right there in that situation, free throws that have to be made. The crowd not that hostile. I mean, they're, of course, booing, but I've seen much worse and more hostile crowds than this. But at any rate, Rufus, 55 and 6, 10 seconds to go. Losing her with an, still with an opportunity, trailing by three. Very much so, because it'll be their ball coming in. Quite frankly, they only need a deuce. This is one of those situations, yeah, they trail by three. Yes, it's 55.6 left in the game, but you don't need the three right now. You need a basket, all right? Because you can basket and foul and hope for it. Oh, my goodness. And it's going to be losing her ball. Dorrell Wright misses a layup a breakaway layup to the basket. That won't, he was out a little deep, but that won't happen too often. Can't fault Durrell right in the least bit. Here's a shot by Terrell. His shot doesn't go. Wright comes down with it, goes off of his hands, and they're gonna say it belongs to Silverado. Losing her now, again, guys are behind you. What you gotta do, and I think coach is telling them to go man 
you cannot let anybody get behind you. They also can't drop their heads here, 40 seconds no, you can't. to go. Still plenty of time. You gotta guard your man, you gotta guard your man. You gotta get your man. Losing a tough man defense. They wanna play hard defense, they don't wanna foul, they have a chance to get it back. And you nearly turned over there. And you finally get the foul call. Ferguson with the foul call. Maybe, quite frankly, a bit of a break for the Olympians. Well, right now, the clock is not on their side. 19 and 6, 10 seconds to go. And two free throws, if they are made here by Kyle Lewis, the junior, is going to make it a, a very tough climb. Not totally impossible, but it's going to be very tough if he's able to convert some free throws with 19 and 6, 10 seconds to go. It's a one and one situation though, so the Olympians still have a chance and they have another foul to give on the one and one. Big free throws here for Silverado. And he converts the front end to make it a four point game. Well, the crowd with some anticipation here, they're standing. They've been standing the last two minutes of this ball game. If he hits this one, it's pretty big. It's already a two possession game. He doesn't hit it. Olympians come down with it. Still plenty of time. That three by Dorrell Wright doesn't go. Can they come down with the ball? Still in the air. Wright has it. Wright puts up another three. Doesn't go. And that may be the game there, fans. Clock continues to run. There was seven seconds at least left. Well, the coach, well, you look at Dorrell Wright, coach for Silverado Kurt Herbst, telling his whole team to get back to the bench. It's not over yet. They're trying to keep the crowd from going on the court. It's not over in terms of the time on the scoreboard. There may be five to seven seconds left, but for the losing Olympians, their chances may well, you just. Yeah, you talk about home ring. Let me, let me get in and show you what home ring is. There was at least six seconds left on the clock when the whistle blew. The clock. Any, any scorekeeper in CIF basketball knows that the clock stops on the whistle, period. You, know, you don't think about it. How the clock continued to run is unconscionable. Well, right. Right. And Rufus. that's homering at its worst because that, my talking and supporting losing doesn't affect the outcome of the game. Well, that affects the outcome of the game. Well, was, that's homering. I was about to say that, Rufus, that's not homering. That's straight up cheating. Yeah. <laughs> There's a big difference there. Well, they're going to put three seconds. 310 seconds, it's probably more time than that. You're right. The, or they may just keep the time on the on the floor if that's well, not the correct time. But at any rate, Eric Butler to the free throw line. And well, you would have to say as Wright shoots it. Right shot doesn't go. And Silverado is going to get out of here with the win. They're going to the CIF 1 AA championship with a 71-67 win over the losing Olympians. You see their fans storm the floor. But before we get out of here, we've got to tell your fans what an exciting run this has been for the Olympians. There you see Donnell Wright, again, talking to his teammates. Let us remember that at one point in the game, they trailed by a margin of 30 to 10. They made it just about all the way back. They got back to within an opportunity to tie it up at the free throw line with possession of the ball to come after that. Dorrell Wright, their big star player of the year. Tough breaks for him at the line, makes only one out of four. Then as a breakaway layup late in the game, doesn't convert that, but look at all the things that Dorrell Wright did for this team. And we're not going to put on Dora Wright's team. The team dug a hole for themselves in the first quarter. And they fought back as a Reggie Morris team will do. And they made a good showing of themselves, Dave. Unfortunately, the final is going to show that Silverado, out of the Sunset League, came in 28-1. They'll go home 29-1 as they defeat the Olympians by 4, 71-67.
Well, on a, on a positive note, as far as the game outcome was concerned, with losing our Olympians, the effort was definitely there in the fourth quarter. And, in, and starting in the second quarter, for that matter, cutting a 20-point lead down to losing by, well, down to two points and losing by only four. Problem was they had a disastrous final two minutes, a final two minutes where they were not able Copy. to be composed. That uh, four free throws making only one of the four and, uh, of course, not able to convert on the possession. So when they take a look back at this game, it's going to be kind of painful when they see some of the missed opportunities. Uh, and, of course, with the Silverado Hawks, as you see their fans all over the court, they storm the court. You have to understand that this game, a lot of significance to them. Not only do they get to the championship round of the CIF Southern Section uh, Division 1A, but this is only a program that's seven years old, and in seven years they are going to play for the championship of the CIF Southern section for this Division One Double Eight. So congratulations to them for their fine effort here tonight. Kurt, Kurt Herps, they were a smaller team than losing her, and they play tough all over the court. But I think, as you pointed out, uh, Rufus, the future for losing her, although they lose a lot of seniors, should look pretty bright with their young coach and Reggie Morris Jr. because he did some great things for this program this year, and they will probably be able to have him for years to come in Lawndale and able to build some sort of tradition at losing her. Let's take this opportunity, fans, because there are a couple of things we want to make sure that you're aware of. Uh, we want you to know, first of all, that it has indeed been a pleasure to bring you this playoff run by the losing Olympians as they make it all the way to the one AA semifinals. And it has taken a cast of dozens, in our case, to get this job done. And we would be remiss, as we only have about five minutes of tape time left, if we didn't mention to you first and foremost the guys who've given their all week in and week out to make this production possible. First, our executive producer of Lawndale Community Cable Channel 22 and its sports department, Tom Strickfadden, working camera tonight was Joe Shore, Eric Chavez. In addition, joining us tonight was Jose Bravo, Ramdot Suchet, Dave Marks, Scott Gutman, of course, I'm Rufus Washington. And as we said, it's been great to bring. I want to let those folks, let you know who made this possible. Now, Dave, back to the game. As we said, the Olympians came in. Man, they put up a fight. They made it a heck of a contest. They made the long ride up here. And that's what the road means to you. And maybe this game is at Losinger. Those four points go the other way. Friendlier baskets. But I think there may be some basketball left. And let's tell the fans a little bit about that. There may be a little basketball left in this Olympian team future anyway. Well, all right. Here's the deal, losing your fans. Uh, from what we understand, of course, it, it depends on when you see this. Uh, you may see this hopefully by Friday night. We're hoping that you get to see this uh, telecast at some point. Losing her cannot win the CIF uh, Southern Section Regional for this division. However, once the regionals are over, the CIF State Tournament begins. And there is a good opportunity that there is going to be an at-large, there will be a couple of at-large teams from the Southern Section region. And uh, we are told that the losing Olympians, by virtue of their record, which will be now 19 and 10, may just get an at-large bid to the CIF State Regional. What that would mean would be they would play their first game on Tuesday, March the 11th. However, because they did not win, they did not go ahead and win the championship, they would definitely not play at losing her. We are told there's a good chance that if they do make that round, they're going to play either Westchester or Fairfax from the city section. So it will not get any easier <laughs> playing Westchester or Fairfax. So one of those teams are going to win the, LI, uh, the uh, CIF LA city section finals, and that could be losing her's next opponent if they get an at-large bid, which would mean they get at least one more game. But for tonight, you got to feel they were somewhat disappointed because they did want to play in the Arrowhead Pond as uh, both of these teams. That's the, that's the goal and objection here. And what they lost by, even if they had been able to get there, they would have gotten an automatic bid in the, even if they lost in that game. But, of course, had they been able to go on and win here tonight and win at the Arrowhead Pond, they would have probably played a home game losing her. But yeah. perhaps one more game to go anyway. Perhaps one more. And we had, it had been our hope fans and Coach Morris has certainly agreed to. But as you saw with the pandemonium, 
and the bedlam. First and foremost is the safety and security of the players as the floor was stormed. I mean, there, there wasn't any potential for an incident, but it's just that there was a mass of humanity down on the floor. Losing her is taking their team to the locker room along with their coaching staff. They'll regroup there. We'll prepare to make the ride back to Lawndale. But we do want you to know that Coach Morris had agreed to sit with us post-game, as he's done before, and talk about what occurred in this game. But in the final analysis, what did occur was that the Silverado Hawks were as good as billed. They came in, they won the game, essentially a home game for them by a margin of 71 to 67. They withstood the losing of pressure. Losing her did make the remarkable comeback, but at the end, it simply was not enough. So fans, for the entire crew, including Scott Goodman. Scott, come over and let's get your face in here one more time before yes, we get out of here. This is Young. Let's show you this everybody. Is, this is this Jimmy is Scott, Olsen, the Cub reporter. Scott right Gutman, our sideline reporter. Of course, this is Dave Marks here. And I don't need to tell you that, of course, I'm Rufus Washington. And what, what, we don't have a mic here for Scott, but we just wanted him to get some camera time. And maybe Scott can I'll tell talk you, we got into, a hat for him, though. Uh, the thing here. But, folks, first and foremost, it has been indeed a pleasure. It's been a lot of fun for me, as always, to be able to bring it to you. We hope that you enjoy it. You are who we do it for. And let's, one final time, congratulate the 2003 Losinger Olympians. And what I'd like to do is call out their names as we roll out of here. The seniors on this squad who, win, lose, or draw, may have played their last game in the Olympian uniform, but they had one heck of a final run before they leave Losinger High School. And they are number 10, Myron Terrell. Number three, Dorrell Wright. Number 23, Quentin Crooks. Number 22, Donnell Wright. Number one, Demetrius Doby. Number three, 33 rather, Dion Brown. Number five, Chris Duran. Number 34, Daryl Street, who couldn't make the trip tonight. And number 21, James Williams. Those are the guys who've been around this program the longest who finally have been able to enjoy a considerable measure of success in the 2003 season. The Olympians have a solid building block to build on, and we know that better things lie ahead for the Olympians. So once again, one last time for the entire crew at Lawndale's Community Cable Channel 22 in conjunction with our colleagues at Hawthorne's Community Cable Channel 22. Oh, wait, hold, hold up, hold up. We, we got, got one, well, one, one more thing. Doro, even though you, Dorrell Wright, you may see him when we do a little, we got, got a little baseball coming. Got some, got some, some Hawthorne and losing her baseball coming up. Then Scott, Scott, Jimmy Olson will be there. Rufus, uh, un unfortunately, won't. But uh, we do have some baseball coming up here as uh, we get into the baseball season. Take me out to the ball game and all of that stuff. So I'd like to remind the folks that uh, keep your dial tuned to Lawndale Community Cable Channel 22 for Hawthorne Cougar and losing her Olympians baseball. And Dorrell Wright does play on the baseball team. He uh, right now, as as we leave you, thinking about Dorrell Wright's possible future. Will it be? In basketball, or will it be in baseball? Okay. Thank you very right. much, and let's wrap and there things up. There we go. Now the only question left as we say good night to you is whether or not KJLH Channel Station 102.3 will show this losing Olympian team a little bit of love. And here's the guy that can make it happen. Fans, it's been great. We thank you as always for joining us. On behalf of everybody, we say good night. When the beat shows them love, we'll see. Unfortunately, they're not news. Can you guys send us a tape?